Hello, welcome to Screen Talk with yours truly, and I'm Fanella Malloy. So today I'll be continuing the discussion on Is Cinema Dead? This is part two. So if you missed part one, you could check that out. It's uh, available either above or in the description. So uh, now that with the last video we talked about the contribution, like the aspects that contributed to the decline of cinema. Now we're going to talk about how we could save cinema. So we're going to go back to Patrick's video where he gives suggestions on how to save cinema. So he does, he does mention in the video that there are like three goals which he includes the first goal, make real movies again, uh, get people to watch the movies and keep making money. Uh, simple goals. So he gives uh, these different uh, suggestions and how we could um, improve cinema on both a quality and quantity level. So let's move to the first goal. Stop making stuff exclusively for streaming. Look, with streaming, you're kind of just throwing money away. I know Netflix will never listen to this, so it's mostly for the other studios, Disney, Warner, Paramount, Universal. Just use your streaming platforms as a library for what you've already released. Have your movies go to streaming after their theatrical release. Just use streaming as passive income to make up for what used to yeah, be Yeah, I, I agree sales. with... Uh with what he has to say here. Cause, um, well, I do find like, it's nice, like with Netflix, for example, they produce like original content, not content, let's say original movies, uh, out there, um, that other studios, uh, don't want to do these days. Um, but at the same time, like with those movies, like they don't get, um, the attention that they deserve by just being exclusive to streaming. And I do agree with his point where like st studios should use streaming to offer their library of uh, content. So I just saw recently that Sony, I guess they're launching uh, their own streaming service. I, f I forgot what they call it. It's not a streaming service per se, but essentially, where if you have a PS4 or PS5, you can watch like um, their their various uh, film titles. I believe if you have a, a subscription, I I don't remember what subscription you need to watch their titles, but I believe they're going to be launching that soon if it's not available already. So, yeah, I do agree. Like they should use streaming as a library as opposed to producing original content out there and we're going to move on to the next point that he offers once this comes constantly re-watching the office they'll pay for peacock just for that okay idea number two learn the right lessons from barbie and oppenheimer let me tell you the wrong lessons the wrong lessons are that people want more movies based on toys and that dramas are only successful if they're directed by Christopher Nolan. No, sorry, that's not it. Barbie was a hit because it was Greta Gerwig's Barbie, because the studio took a risk and gave an interesting filmmaker a lot of control over this property, and she had a vision that audiences got excited about. Oppenheimer is a bleak, three-hour R-rated movie that is mostly about people talking in rooms. And so far, it has made almost a billion dollars. That is insane. And this is also the result of a singular filmmaker making the movie they wanted to make. The main lesson here is that audiences genuinely do want to see something new. They're tired of flashes and transformerses, and they want new stories. They have a broader appetite than they've been given credit for these past 20 years. What matters is how the movies are marketed. The studios sold them as events, and not just because they opened on the same day. 
These movies were new and different and interesting, and the narrative was that you had to see them. Really, you had to see them both if you wanted to be a part of the cultural yeah, conversation. Yeah, uh, because I previously talked about the Barbenheimer experience. Uh, check out that video. But yeah, like I was uh, honestly like, if let's say if if it was early in the year, um, and you say to oh like Barbie and Oppenheimer are gonna do, well, I'm like no way, like I I wouldn't buy that. But then fast forward to months later, here we are. It it did so well. The boxers, they're essentially one of the they're both like uh, high up there in terms of highest grossing movies uh, of the year, both domestically and internationally, which is insane. Like it's more insane for Oppenheimer to do so well because of its uh, subject matter and all that stuff. But it does, I guess here, like it proves that you need to trust the director's, uh, the filmmaker's vision because both uh, Greta Gerwig and Chris Nolan are prominent uh directors and they have shared their own um films of success and and all that stuff which is great so i do think uh the lesson here is that yeah like we need to take more risk in terms of i guess i don't know original ideas like in terms of this point here but we just need to trust um the filmmakers in terms of what they want to achieve uh, with their movies than just allowing like the studios to dictate, you know, what should or shouldn't be on screen. So we're going to go on to his third point here. Do, 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 once I find it. More money than the last couple Marvel movies. Despite what the studios have believed for years, audiences aren't stupid and they'll watch good movies under the right circumstances. Okay, yeah. idea number so, three. So, yeah, like, I guess, like, um, just to go off that point briefly, that, like, uh, the um, ugh, the studio should not underestimate uh, the audiences because clearly, like, like, if we're looking at the summer box office, they chose to watch movies like Barbie, Oppenheimer, over... Um, movies such as the flash and indiana jones because i think the audience is like we want to see something new we we don't want to end up seeing the same stuff that follows either the same formula despite you know different characters and all that sorts of stuff like like we're willing to see something new because otherwise if we keep saying seeing the same things over and over again people are, are going to get tired and that ultimately is going to drive the revenue down for those types of movies. So let's go on to his next point. Stop spending so much money on movies. Oppenheimer and Barbie cost about a hundred million dollars each. That isn't cheap, but look at it this way. The new Indiana Jones cost $290 million. The Flash and Transformers Rise of the Beasts cost 200 million each. Why? The conventional studio wisdom for years has been, if you fill a movie with wall-to-wall -wall CGI, it will make more money. But clearly that isn't true anymore. The biggest hits of the year cost half of what those other movies did. So maybe stop throwing away hundreds of millions of dollars on movies people aren't even excited for and spend it, like, smarter. For the cost of that Transformers movie, you could make five smaller movies, which means five extra shots and make yeah, a hit. Yeah, because it's insane that with studios are spending, what, $200 million budget or more on, like, the franchise IP movies. And we see it clearly, especially this year, that a lot of those high, expensive, big-budget movies did not even break even. And some of them, I just question... How are, how are they worth uh, that much when the quality is terrible with a lot of those movies? I just wonder. So, yeah, like Patrick is saying, like, we need to uh, trim those budgets down and actually focus on making a, a good quality movie as opposed to just uh, doing having, like, a, a, a very hefty price take just because... It's IP and, oh, and we're going to recuperate it easy peasy. That's not the case anymore because people are just getting tired of watching the same old movies. So 
certainly the budgets need to be reevaluated. So we're going to go on to his next point here. It's not far off. <laughs> important one here number four retrain audiences to go see more movies from what i've seen the best analysis of the state of the american film industry and what to do about it came last fall from james gray director of movies like armageddon time and the lost city of zed here's a clip here's what happened when you make movies that only make a ton of money and they're only one kind of movie you begin to get a large segment of the population out of the habit of going to the movies. And then you begin to eliminate the importance of movies culturally. And Academy Awards, they know it. Yeah. They sit around and they say, why is the viewership? Why is it going yeah, down? Yeah, yeah. It's going down because we did not make the investment in the broad-based engagement with the product. I know, okay, I know, maybe a movie that was made well, you know, Ang Lee movie Ice Storm, maybe that didn't make a billion dollars, but you know what? It maintained broad based interest. Exactly. So we've got to force it back. And you know what? The studios should be willing to lose money for a couple of years on art film divisions. And in the end, they will be happier because it'll that. come back. I, that's what I think. Yeah, I've absolutely talked a lot. I agree with uh, those points because. I do think, yeah, there, we need to see more variety of movies than putting out the same uh, types of movies because with this year, they essentially proved that. Like, by, like if Barbie, like, it, it geared towards, like, female audiences and they all, like, showed up and look how the movie turned out now. And um, with Oppenheimer, like, that was more towards, like, an older audience, but then... That did very well too. So, and like, cause with like the superhero movies that the studios are putting out, like it's only, I would say it's geared towards a limited audience and not everybody is going to watch those types of movies. So I think we need to see more variety of movies. That way, if you put more variety out there, you earn more money in the box office. So I'm going to go on to his next point here. Once I find it, it's like I'm talking to myself here. Over time. What Gray is saying here is that over the past 20 years or so, the studios, by doubling down on one kind of movie and so relentlessly selling that one kind of movie, they trained audiences to only see that one kind of movie. And they got them out of the habit of just casually going to the movies. So what Gray proposes is that the industry needs to retrain the audience. Be willing to take a bit of a loss for a few years by reinvesting in the type of movies that they stopped making. Dramas, movies for adults, movies that actually aspire to be classics, like the ones from the 70s, 80s, and 90s that we all miss. Give audiences a variety of options again. Tell them you can go to the movies for something other than the fifth installment in a series of $200 million movies based on a cartoon. That a movie can actually be exciting and make you feel something other than wondering what the post credit scene means for what will happen in the next one. Remind audiences that movies are about risks. And it's okay to take a chance on a movie where you don't already know exactly what it's going to be. Yeah, I pretty much agree with all those points. Um, honestly, we need to take more risk in terms of uh, the movies that they put out because I think, as I've said, if you keep putting out the same types of movies that follow like the same formula and all that stuff, it gets very boring, it gets repetitive, and it'll tune people out. So I think this is why, like I guess, with the independent scene, like regardless of um you know the, the ups and downs with independent movies i think that's why it'll appeal to a lot of the creative artists because at least they're willing to take the risk even though like it's more risk because of like financial aspects and all that stuff like at least like they're able to create whatever they want and all that stuff so i do think we need to see 
more of that with the mainstream movies. And then let's get on to his next point. Okay, idea number five, make comedies again. This is pretty self-explanatory. Just, just please make comedy movies again and actually put them in theaters. And I don't mean action comedies or superhero movies that have some jokes, like just regular comedies. This year, everyone was obsessively looking at No Hard Feelings, the Jennifer Lawrence movie, putting the entire weight of the future of theatrical comedy movies on its shoulder. And I liked that movie, but that is way too much pressure for one film. Look, comedies do not cost a lot of money to make, and they have the potential to make a lot of money. So just make more. It's a small investment and can pay off in a huge way. And look, I just miss sitting in a crowded theater with everyone losing their minds at a really funny movie. Yeah, bring we certainly back. need to bring back uh, comedies because certainly that genre is the, it's missing presence is, is definitely felt like with the movies because we see TV, for example, is doing a great job of comedies such as Abbott Elementary the bear and uh, so forth. So if TV is able to produce comedies, how come movies are, are not able to do the same thing? Cause I do think we need to see all sorts of comedies, not just like particular ones. Cause I noticed like uh, with the summer this year, with the comedies that came out, it was, it was mainly R rated movies. And I mean, sh sure, like those are fine to put out, but not everybody is going to appeal to the R-rated movie. So we need to tackle all sorts of, of comedies, not just ones that are for mature audiences. So I'm going to go on to his next point here. Do, 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 do. So now my final mm -hmm. idea for saving cinema, and this is a big one. Number six, invest in making new so, movie stars. I'm not sure, like, um, with that point, I fully agree with. but Because, like I've said, like, with um, movie stars, it's debatable because not all uh, movies um, that don't have movie stars fail. Because I think it's, it's a case-by-case -case, uh, situation. But I do see his point yet, like, yes, we do need to have movie stars um, thriving these days, because that is certainly missing. We've already established here why movie stars matter. So let's get some goddamn new ones. People already like the various Chris's from the Marvel movies and stuff, but we're giving them nothing to do. Evans is stuck in miserable streaming shit like Ghosted in a role that should have been played by, like, Jason Siegel. And next year, he's in a Christmas action movie for Amazon with The Rock? Come on, our dude is suffering here. Give him a Jerry Maguire or a No Way Out. Put the man in a legal drama. Look, the previous couple generations of stars are getting older. Tom Cruise can't carry us forever. Okay, maybe he can, but he could use some help. These people are essential to the industry and the art form. They get movies made, so we need to take those popular people and make them into actual yeah, stars. Yeah, like he does bring up some uh, good points here, but I do think, because um, um, he does mention this earlier when he talks about the death of the movie star, I do think what contributes to the death of the movie star I would say yes, it's uh, marketing because with posters, for some, like with Spider-Man, like you mentioned earlier in the video, they don't uh, highlight the, the main actors' names. But I do think also what contributes to the death of the movie star is uh, social media. Because essentially, with some people, celebrities, when they post stuff that offends people, that will essentially prevent a lot of people to see their their upcoming work a notable example is rachel ziegler like if you research her comments on snow white because she's going to be in the upcoming snow white remake and the hunger games prequel movie that's coming out in november interesting to see how that is going to do i don't think it's going to do well my opinion but we shall see for that one so 
Yeah, like in terms of uh, movie stars saving cinema, it's it's debatable. I don't think it's necessary, in my opinion, because I think at the end of the day, like what will drive people to see movies in the theaters is the story itself. Like, is it uh, worthwhile? Is it not? Sure, in some cases, like the the stars matter. I would say, like that's more like international, particular with India, like because they rely on the star system. Because recently I watched uh, Jawan that starred um, SRK. It was an entertaining movie, that one. And yeah, like while I was watching that movie with my brother, there were people that were cheering every time SRK appeared on screen, which is fascinating. So I would say this last point is debatable in terms of saving cinema, but I, I do see uh, its importance uh, with uh, Patrick's points on it. So that's pretty much all what I have to say in terms of uh, the decline of cinema. So I would love to know, what do you guys think about uh, this topic? Do you agree like with the points mentioned? Do you disagree? Do you guys have any suggestions on how to uh, make cinema great again, essentially? Let me know in the comment section. And my you could look my socials are in the description along with my buy me a coffee link and also my affiliate link for riverside so thank you guys so much for watching this video for screen talk and i will catch you on the next one